Assalamu alaikum dear students hope you are all doing well we are studying heredity and evolution the last topic was about the introduction regarding the chapter now let's start with the first topic that is accumulation of variations during reproduction accumulation of variations during reproduction that means how variations that is differences are added up during the process of reproduction you already know about the fact that there are two types of reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in case of asexual reproductions variations are almost nil we see rarely some variations if there are some rare variation is seen during asexual reproduction then how they are actually caused what is the reason behind that because we already know that in case of asexual reproduction the new organisms or the new cells are exact copy of their parents which we call as clones that means almost variation rate in case of asexual reproduction is 0% but if there will be any kind of small variation seen in the asexual reproduction the reason for that is inaccuracy inaccuracy during dna copying inaccuracy during dna copying no process on earth is 100% efficient that means there is no process there is no machine which can be 100% efficient that means which can do whole work efficiently whole work will be perfect there will be some error same applies to the dna copying you will see in case of dna copying there are some inaccuracies dna copying errors due to which there can be very 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 small minute variation seen in asexual reproduction even we can regard them as there are no variations but when we see the another aspect that is the sexual reproduction in case of sexual reproduction there is a good amount of variation seen in uh, offsprings that has been developed from the parent generation or new cells that has been developed from the parent cells there is really a good concentration of variations how these variations accumulate how these variations get added up added up and form a good concentration form a high concentration of variations which is simply visible through phenotype there are actually four reasons through which variations accumulate during sexual reproduction during sexual reproduction what are those four reasons first we have the most important reason that is chance separation of chromosomes during gamete formation i repeat chance separation of gametes during gamete formation or you can see like this chance separation of chromosomes during gamete formation when there is the process of gametogenesis chromosomes are separated this is the first reason second reason for accumulation of variations is that crossing over during the process of meiosis crossing over during the process of meiosis then the third important reason for accumulation of variations is chance coming together of chromosomes chance coming together of chromosomes during process of fertilization during process of fertilization that means chromosomes first separate then they are again coming together but this time process is fertilization and lastly we have the fourth reason which is mutations which is mutations now coming to the first reason that is the chance separation of chromosomes during gamete formation when there is the process of gamete formation gametogenesis in male organism as well as female organism you will see diploid cell diploid mother cell that forms the gametes will simply divide by meiosis as well as mitosis but when there will be meiosis you will see chromosome number will get reduced to half chromosome number will get reduced to half the gamete will possess only half the chromosome number of mother cell gamete mother cell that means out of 46 gamete will possess only 23 chromosomes and another gamete will possess only 23 this is how there are simply chromosomes separating 23 chromosomes going in one gamete and 23 chromosomes going in another gamete both gametes can be male gametes or both gametes can be 
female gametes. But here is separation. Chromosomes are separating like this. When there is separation, there are chances that there are variations due to the error in separation of chromosomes. Normally, if there are high error rate in separation of chromosomes that are lethal, that can lead to the genetic disease. But normal separation, you will see up to this point, chromosomes are in pairs like this. But when they are going to separate, they will function of their own and they will function of their own. This is the reason that variations accumulate. Further, what will happen in future to this gamete and to this gamete? We do not know. There will be again different processes through which this gamete will go. Then gametes are formed, male gametes in male organism and female gametes in female organism. Then there is a second reason which is the very, very important reason accumulating for the most of the variations taking place in the human beings crossing over which I already have explained that crossing over only and only occurs in meiosis cell division and meiosis occurs during sexual reproduction. That is why we see variations occur during sexual reproduction. What happen in crossing over? Simply chromosomal segments exchange like this, exchange of chromosomal segments, then they get cutted and after cutting they are again joined, they are again joined. But the segment of this chromosome will be attached to this chromosome and segment of this chromosome will be attached to this chromosome. This is interchange, there is interchange of fragment of DNA from one chromosome to another chromosome. You are changing the place when there is a change in segment of DNA. Of course, there will be change in sequence of genes, change in sequence of genes that will ultimately lead to the variations, differences. That is why I do not look exactly like my parents, you do not look exactly like your parent or you do not look exactly like your siblings. Then after that we have the third solid reason that is chance coming together of chromosomes, gametes during process of fertilization. You will see male gamete is simply from male organism and female gamete is from the female organism. Both are having same race, human race. It is human race, it is human race. But first if we compare these human beings, male and female organism, they already show variations from each other. Now their chromosomal gametes, chromosomal content are going to join so that there will be process of fertilization, fusion of male gamete and female gamete and there will be formation of new cell zygote. These have their own variations already because male organisms belong to one family of human race, female belongs to another family. Male has its own genetic makeup, female has its own genetic makeup that shows particular own phenotype as well as own phenotype from another organism. But now already changed phenotypes, already varying genotypes are again going to combine, rate of variation will further increase. This is the reason how variations actually accumulate during the process of sexual reproduction. And these three regions are naturally going during the process of reproduction. They are naturally going during the process of reproduction. The fourth reason, the fourth reason is to some extent different. Mutations. What are mutations? Mutations are actually sudden changes that take place in the DNA. Mutations are defined as sudden changes that take place in the DNA due to an agent called as mutagen due to an agent called as mutagen. That means mutation is actually change that occurs in the DNA, but due to some agent. What is that agent called as mutagen? Mutagen simply means it is the agent which causes mutation, which causes mutation. This mutagen can be physical, chemical or biological. Like we have different mutagens, we have x-rays physical mutagen x-ray that can simply change the DNA sequence. And when there is change in the DNA sequence, you will see there will be change in the phenotype due to that change in genotype sequence. Same we have some chemicals which we take inside our body, they can change the sequence of DNA of cells. And we see there is different uh, phenotype due to that changed genotype. And 
biological mutagen can be viruses which can change the gene sequence which can change the dna sequence and mostly and mostly you will see mutations are lethal mutations are lethal lethal means they are harmful due to mutations there can be very harmful effects there can be genetical defects or there can be sometimes death depending upon the mutation which type of mutation is taking place then the important aspect here is that can mutagen a carcinogen can mutagen as be a carcinogen it can be so it can be so first what is carcinogen carcinogen is that agent which causes cancer carcinogen is that agent which causes cancer fine but the carcinogen causes cancer again due to same procedure what is that change in dna sequence change in dna sequence that mean carcinogen is also mutagen yes every carcinogen is mutagen but every mutagen is carcinogen it's not necessary it's not necessary some of the mutagens change dna sequence but that will not result in the cancer but the mutagen that results in cancer due to the change in dna sequence is carcinogen as well as mutagen in simple words we can say like this every carcinogen is a mutagen but every mutagen cannot be carcinogen these are the four important reasons due to which accumulation of variation takes place during sexual reproduction that is why we are showing such huge variations from our parent generation or from our siblings this is the actual reason for accumulation of variations i hope it's clear to you now moving to the next topic that is mendel's contribution that is mendel's contribution or we can say mendelian genetics like i told you in the last lecture that gregor johan mendel is called as father of genetics why so because mendel has laid the foundation stone of the branch of biology that is genetics that is genetics Mendel was born in 1822 in a poor peasant family at Moravia at Moravia then in 1843 Mendel became a monk Mendel became a monk monk is actually an individual that devotes his or her life towards religion but in buddhism in buddhism then in 1843 he became a monk after some time in 1847 he was made abbot he was made abbot abbot means head of the austrian austrian monastery austrian monastery monastery is the building in which monks are living it consists of all the aspects school hospital and all that uh, other uh, things in the same campus augustinian monastery head was made by their conference meet and it was chosen mendel in 1847 first in 1843 he was made he made he made monk then after that in 1847 he was made abbot of augustinian monastery and he worked in this monastery as teacher as teacher then after some time in 1851 he went to the university of venia he went to the university of venia where he worked for 2 years where he worked for 2 years in natural history and mathematics in natural history and mathematics after that he returned back to the same augustinian monastery but during this period he got interested in hybridization experiments or breeding experiments breeding experiments simply means when there is the pro reproduction process going into to going into two different processes simply reproduction takes place between two different organisms they can be plants or they can be animals but mendel got interested in breeding experiments or hybridization experiments especially in plants and the plant was pea plant the plant was pea plant it was grown in the garden of the monastery and almost from 18 56 to 1865 for about 10 years for about 10 years 
he worked for these breeding experiments for these breeding experiments and the results he found simply he published them in the sinus journal present at that time in the same austria but unfortunately unfortunately his work was not simply published to such an extent so that it will grab the attention of people or public because that time there was also the concept of evolution given by the darwin and people were attracted towards that concept and in the meantime there was death of the mendel there was death of the mendel but his work was as such then after some times there were three scientists there were three scientists one was from netherland another one was from germany and another one from was from austria another one from was from uh, austria the scientist from netherland was hugo de vries from germany it was karl collins and from austria it was what we called as erich von threshermark erich von threshermark they simply observed the work of mendel they simply observed the work of mendel they performed it again and they got the same results same conclusions which mendel has published and ultimately in 1900 they published mendel's work again there was republication of mendel's work again and finally in 1901 the work of mendel was simply given the credit how it was given the credit mendel was simply called as the father of genetics because he laid the foundation stone of the branch of biology that is genetic by performing his breeding experiments the conclusions drawn from his experiments the observations drawn from his experiments were 100% valid and they were true because it was republished it was reformed by other scientists and when the work got republished it was seen yes this is the fact these conclusions are 100% valid and due to this reason mendel is regarded as the father of genetics i hope it's clear to you people rest we will discuss other things in the coming topics till that stay home stay good thank you